Hello everybody, welcome to my let's play of Sid Meier's Civilization V God and Kings. Uh, I wonder if the music is on a bit too loud. Doesn't seem like it. I will see if it is. Uh, give me one minute. Okay, everything seems perfect. So, anyhow, <coughs> pardon me. I will be playing the Gods and Kings expansion with this game. And I will set up one of the game. And uh, one of the funniest things I wanted to try to do is actually just randomly um, let say, nation selection be random. Random map type, huge. Print difficulty, standard pace, advanced setup. So random map type, huge print. Everything's normal. I guess I'll leave all the victories on. Well, diplomatic is kind of pretty easy, I have to say. Uh, time, that's like, that's the sucky one. I want raging barbarians. And uh, no ancient ruins. Well, ancient ruins. What I don't like about them is that sometimes they they give unfair uh, bonuses. Uh, so yeah. So science, domination, culture. Well, let's just go with domination because I'm sure you want to see some military action. So, anyways, there's gonna be twelve civilizations, all hell of a fucking lot. So the world is going to be populated and have a lot of fun. So let us start thy game. Who am I going to be as? Alright, Maria Theresa of Austria-Hungary. Well, Austria. Sovereign of Austria, the people bow to your gracious will. Following the death of your father, King Charles VI, you ascended to the throne of Austria during a time of great instability. But the empty coffers and diminished military did little to dissuade your ambitions. Faced with war almost immediately upon your succession to the throne, you managed to fend off your foes and in naming your husband Francis Stephen co-ruler, assured your place as Empress of the Holy Roman Empire. During your reign, you guided Austria on a new path of reform, strengthening the military, replenishing the treasury, and improving the educational system of the kingdom. Oh, great queen, bold and dignified. Okay, so, uh, we're playing as Austria. Austria has this one special thing, you could buy city-states, which is pretty awesome. So, over here we've got a mountain range to our north. We've got forests, plains, incense, cotton, Ooh, I think we started in the greatest place to play Vienna. We have wheat up here as well. So this will give us a good thing. There's even more cotton up here. This will prove advantageous. I will build a scout right away. And we can start exploring this huge world populated by many nations. Now we have to choose a technology. Uh, as we have uh, cotton and incense, I guess we need calendar. So, I think we're gonna shotgun calendar. <laughs> so we need pottery first, then we'll shotgun calendar. Alright. Next turn. Alright. So, yeah. We're gonna go up north here. Here seems to be a desert, so we must be at the southern, southern half of the map. We don't know what type of map it is yet, but I'm assuming that it is either continental or Pangea. The reason being that there's no huge water masses that we've seen so far. Well, there's one. Being close to the sea is actually a bonus. So let's keep going and exploring. We could have three sources of cotton which will increase productivity by a great a lot. And finally we have our scout that will spawn in Vienna. And we will just run around and scout the surroundings and then I'll put it on automated. I will place my warriors on top of this sandy desert hill. And I will build a monument I guess just for culture. 
because I like uh, adopting social policies. Social policies are great. They allow you to do so many things. So let us just explore a bit more. If there's any natural resources that might be exploited. Fortunately, we can't see any iron or anything like that, so we're gonna have to wait on that. Ooh, there's bananas, which still require a calendar. We have a great forest here. The Venus population has grown. And we've discovered some ruins and barbarian camps. If I'm correct, I put raging barbarians on because I want uh, expansion to be more threatless and dangerous. So here th there's a start of a river, so over here is a good place to do um, to build a city. And our city is at the head of a river as well. So uh, going down rivers is usually pretty good. Uh, not only for resources, but just for uh, wealth in general because any tile beside a river tile gains plus one gold so it is uh, pretty good advanced weaponry found so here if we attack we're gonna get into a stalemate so he lost exactly the same amount of health <coughs> let's move so there you go, we've got temples and things. Here we've got two stone deposits and more cotton. So that would be interesting. Manor victory. The, uh, in Civ 5 they also degraded the power, uh, like the amount of XP you could get from, ex from barbarians. You could get uh, two levels only. And then after that it's irrelevant. You won't get any, uh, any new uh, improvements from it. So uh, that's just to keep the game balanced because you just can't farm barbarians anymore. All right, so my archers are on the way around. It used to be a scout unit. All right, rough terrain combat. Get into healing mode. Hopefully, I won't lose them because that would suck. Travel on top of this hill. Ew, wheat and floodplains. That's perfect. This archer also keeps his stats of uh, uh, ignoring terrain D bonuses. So. There you go. And now we're going into the great desert where we found even more. Ooh. Alright, so we just met the Ethiopians. So let's just discuss. They're neutral. Hasn't been in any major incidents. Trade is not gonna happen for a little bit, so. Yeah, we could just wait them out. Ethiopian warriors. Here there's nice oasises, and if we place a city over here, somewhere over here, we could gain uh, a lot of faith by adopting one of the fate policies. I adopt liter liberty first just to get that extra settler at the start. Ooh, jackpot! Fountain of use. Ooh, Jesus. I'm gonna build a city. I'm gonna shotgun a city right there. No one's stealing my fountain of use. So we're just gonna have to try to get a city there before anybody else does. There seems to be a lot of wheat on this map. Oh, there's some marble over there too. So building a city here right at the riverhead would uh, benefit us. Yeah, building a city here, here-ish. And it will encompassate all this. That would work. Go across and see. Ooh, copper. We need mining for that one. Come on, Diana. You could produce faster than that. You're the great capital of our nation. Great capital, in theory. Hmm, a 
lots of deserts. But they're small deserts, they're not huge ones. Alright, you guys, go up on top of this hill. Go on top of the next hill. More bar. Ethiopian archers. Okay. So they seem to be doing the same thing. Let's try to kill this camp like I will stop spawning fuckers. There you go. Ching, ching 25 gold. And we'll go and grab these ancient ruins. They will benefit us greatly. <coughs> 20 more culture in the city. So you guys could be automated, but... I'll see. Just automate you fuckers. Uh, you guys, yeah, you can't attack these because they're Ethiopians, they're not barbarian. And there's more Wii's. Okay. Uh, guess I'll build an extra scout just to scout the planet. Granary gives extra food. Shrine gives face for religious purposes. Go with the granary first. I want Vienna. Vienna is supposed to be your capital, so the biggest city. Oh yeah, I can adopt the policy. This one is plus one production in every city and five percent production in cities constructing buildings. And this one, the improvement goes on decreased by twenty five percent. A worker appears in a capital. So over here, this will uh, increase our production capabilities. As well as uh, uh, the next one down in a few turns, we'll get a free settler. So that would be nice. Settlers, the problem is they stop the growth of your city, so settlers have to be built like smartly. You can't just spam settlers. They stop the growth, so you, if it takes 12 turns, it's gonna just keep taking 12 turns to complete it. So teach us to number our days so that we may apply our hearts. Yay, we've got that. Let's attack him. You know you're gonna win that, it's almost guaranteed. And uh, sciences. Open dissectory. And we will need animal husbandry for the sheep that we have uh, in uh, close to our city borders. Yeah, raging barbarians. That's gonna suck. The most literate people. I'm so fucking far behind. Yeah, we've received 20 face. There you go. Next. At least Vienna is very defensible. All units will have to pass either through this mountain, through here, or they'll have to come through the south to get a good angle of attack. I think I'm gonna get the Desert Flow Core. That's one of the best ones. Let's get Desert Flow Core. That's actually pretty good. Here we have wine. We're gonna need some wine. So as you can see, uh, Civ 5, they say that you don't need many cities to be successful, and I agree with that. But you do need a certain amount to like gain all the natural resources in your territories. Because if not, you're gonna be fucked. And people could outcompete you and outsmile you, so they could outproduce you, they could have more units and more everything, so. Just kill this guy. Oh, there's a city state here. Next turn. Okay, so we met Isabel of Spain. And yeah, we're still neutral. Alright, let's go down. So we met Singapore. They're a trade nation.
Diplomatic marriage is basically conquer them by uh, just giving them 500 gold. That's after you're uh, best friends with them. So I will keep running uh, things like that and see what happens. So as we have calendar, we can start uh, building stuff. Combat in rough terrain. Mm -hmm. 